Since day one, KTS Vaughn was surrounded by crime due to his family's involvement in gang activities. His father, Vincent Davis Sr., also known as Big Vinny, was an OG around the east side, known by a lot of people. He was part of EBC, a set of conservative vice lords. So it was tragically normal for all of them to get in that way. Devin Davis, also known as Big Cutthroat, or simply KTS Vaughn, was born on December 1, 1993. He wasn't the only child in his family. He was accompanied by his siblings Earl, Dre, Vinny and KJ, and also his sister India that stays outside of Chicago. While Vinny and KJ was his full-fledged brother, sharing the same parentage, Dre, though a brother as well, had a different father known as Shy City Jeff. But Big Vinny have taken care of Dre like his own, with Vaughn holding the position of the youngest brother, all of them been active gang members following the same footsteps starting from Earl. Same with their cousin Isaiah Zico Walker, 18-year-old gang member from 051 Young Money that was killed during an altercation outside a McDonald in Chicago's South Side. Zico accepted an invitation to go out to eat from a friend on September 27, 2008, while on a visit home from Ashton University. Zico got into an argument with a rival gang member from THF in the McDonald's parking lot in the 700 block of East 47th Street. Zico was shot multiple times and later died as a result of his wounds. After his death, 051 would start going by the name Zico World. KTS Vaughn also got a tattoo of Zico World on his stomach after that. Zico was a beloved figure in the community, so the loss was hard to accept. THF Aki was year later convicted of the murder of Zico. He tried to leave the town but been quickly arrested by FBI. Now Vaughn was at first member of EBC aka E-Block, a set of conservative vice lords, just like his pops. While his oldest brother Dre was a part of the Lakeside, the GD set, later known as Lolo World or Pasto Gang. But later all of them Vaughn and Vinny became a full members of the Lakeside just like Dre. KTS, which stands for Kill to Survive, started as an alliance between different hoods around the area from Pocket Town to Lakeside and E-Block. But after some time, they became their own thing. They known for beef with NLMB, which stands for No Limit Muskegon Boys or Never Leave My Brother, is an alliance between No Limit and Muskegon Boys, Renegade Stones and G's around 78 to 79. This where G Herbo and Lil Bibby from. ABK, small set of stones on 72nd and Coles, allied with NLMB. Sircon City, one of the oldest GD sets in Chicago. And then 800, then Gotti World, Evans Mob, GMEBE, Paxtown, and Drill City. On April 9, 2011, Vaughn caught his first body, Michael Lee, also known as Gotti from an 8x13 gang, was sitting in his car on a Saturday night along South King Drive's 5500 block. Suddenly a car pulled up. KTS Vaughn extended his arm, fatally shooting Gotti in the head. He was later found dead at the Stroger Hospital. Gotti was honored by his gang with the moniker Gotti World. After killing Gotti, Vaughn continued to terrorize all his enemies. He and the other KTS members posted jokes about Gotti's passing on social media and printed Don't Go Gotti shirts. This phrase became popular amongst the members very quickly. Vaughn started robbing and fighting people on daily basis. He wanted all the smoke with everybody. He was telling that if you in the house and not outside, then y'all not KTS. Hey, if you claim KTS and your ass in the house, you was not in this field. Yeah, that shit over with, man. You cut though, then you ain't in the field. KTS, you ain't in the field. That shit over with, man. You ain't cut though. You ain't cut though no more. He wanted all his people steady outside, putting work for the set. KTS Vaughn has been characterized by many as a cold-blooded psychopath, which he was not. He was definitely a demon, but Vaughn was actually a nice normal kid. He was an honor roll student his entire life. You be watching certain shit, you gotta be like, damn, they be like, dude, them crazy as hell, dude, them be tweaking. 
But then, like, you always got to remember, there's two sides to everything. You know what I'm saying? Facts, it's facts, always, facts. A, it's always, a, it's always the action and the reaction. You get what I'm saying? Facts. Cause and effect. So, so a motherfucker be like, man, them niggas crazy as hell. But you don't even know what happened to make them. You get what I'm saying? What transpired hey. before a motherfucker do certain shit. So it don't even be that a motherfucker crazy. You don't even know what the fuck could have, could have happened to make a motherfucker do what they felt like they had to do. You get what I'm saying? Bro, and that's why that's why I love that Street Life song because I heard the no lacking and then I heard Street Life and I was like ah I'm like bro not crazy it made a lot of sense when I heard that when I heard that song you know nah, what I'm saying yeah no nah, yeah, nah, my little brother hey, my little brother's an honor roll student his whole life bro the little boy the little yeah. boy's smart as hell gang <laughs> the little boy's a straight honor roll student he's smart as hell see? he was definitely a smart kid because he knew how to move in the streets he had a big target on his head because he made a lot of enemies. Y'all gotta understand that nobody becomes something for no reason. He was just simply a product of his own environment. He just simply seen things that a teenager should not see. The streets flooded with drugs, weapons, and gang violence. So he adapted to it. Vaughn was out for blood and ready to eliminate all his ops. In his songs and on the internet, Vaughn was steady disrespecting his enemies. He also was wearing clothing that mocked his dead ops and can't forget about recording all the videos, especially the No Lacking Part 3. Chicago was already known for its drill music, but Vaughn was actually one of the first that started putting insults about his deceased enemies on clothing. He was also one of the first ones who started with smoking on the ops line. In October 2012, he and his brother Dre and some other KTS members would catch a No Limit member named Cairo at McDonald's. The other No Limit members went to the back hiding behind counters, leaving Cairo at the mercy of Dre. Dre and Vaughn, they corner Cairo, telling him to say fuck rock, but he refused. But Dre wasn't taking no for an answer. He punched Cairo so hard, split his lip wide open and damn near broke his jaw. This viral moment could have ended up worse. Before KTS members entered the McDonald's, one of their members said, get him outside I'ma pop them from a punch to a multiple murder and multiple murder sentences. Fortunately, this didn't happen. Glass him, get him outside, then I'm gonna pop him. You got that on you? Yeah, glass him, get him outside, then I'm gonna pop him. After leaving McDonald's, allegedly Cairo, Kobe, and Moody from No Limbs left McDonald's to get guns, returned and started shooting at KTS. Pasto, a KTS member, got hit in the arm. They all rolled back to their turf. But Vaughn? He just laughed like nothing happened. Month later on November the 11th, 2012, Vaughn dropping the hit, No Love, disrespecting Gotti. In 25 May, 2013, KTS Vaughn and some other members were lurking around Sircon City, trying to catch someone from their rival hood. His next victim would be a Pharaoh Denard, who was only 18 years old at the time of his death. Pharaoh's dad asked him to take out the trash. He went outside to throw the garbage in a nearby alley between Dorchester and Dante Avenues just north of 74th Street around 9.20 p.m. He got caught by KTS Vaughn and his group. Pharaoh was hit eight times in the head by Vaughn after he jumped out of the car. Most of his face got blown off in the shooting. His body lay under a street lamp. Month later, Vaughn escalated the disrespect by mocking Pharaoh on Twitter with the message, calling him fried face. This didn't sit well with Pharaoh's girlfriend. In response, she made a tweet directed at KTS Vaughn. In response, KTS Vaughn had replied her, you know Pharaoh caught face shots, LBS. Now this obviously wouldn't stop just there. He would post another bunch of tweets mocking Pharaoh. In this same year on August of 10th, 2013, G Herbo's close friend Jacoby Herring, AKA Kobe from No Limit, who was also at the incident when Cairo got punched, would die in front of the same McDonald's at 4.10 a.m. After the incident, they would later clown Cairo and others as well. Like saying, welcome to the fried ops. Vaughn would also post Kobe's death site on his IG saying, NLMB flow. But then, unexpected twists came his way. In 2014, Vaughn suffered a gunshot wound to his chest, which took him off the street for a while to recover. This was also a year when his brother Vincent Davis Jr., known as KTS Vinny, got locked up for a firearm and aggravated battery, resulting in a 15-year sentence. In 2015, amidst an ongoing conflict, 
the music scene was flourishing with artists like Lil Bibby and G Herbo making their mark in the industry. During this time, they began targeting Vaughn's deceased friends in their lyrics, especially Pasto. Naturally, KTS Vaughn, once he recovered, he would post pictures on his IG that sent a clear message to his rivals that he's still alive. That bullet made me skinny, but it's cool I'm back, he said in one of his Instagram posts. After spending several months at the hospital, he would get back in the streets, releasing some of the biggest and first songs in his new upcoming mixtape of his career. On April the 10th, 2015, he drops the track Street Life where he's talking about the life in the streets, showing also how he literally cooking crack. It's also where Vaughn says if he didn't kill for Pasto, it wouldn't be right. He would rap that he got caught lacking when he got shot, but that every shooter isn't a killer. He also says on the song that he's smoking Kobe, disrespecting one of the members from No Limbs once again. The song was a somber but genuine reflection on the grim reality of KTS Vaughn's had grown up in. The song's lyrics contained a serious warning about the dangers of fallen victim to this way of life, where one might be forced to awful things like killing a friend of 10 years or dying broke unable to fund the ongoing gang war. However, it would be KTS Vaughn's next song that would skyrocket and unfortunately be his last. On April 29, 2015, Vaughn releases the music video for the track Kill to Survive. The offensive merchandise featured in the video, which listed the names of their rivals who had been killed, continued the trend of offensive content. He would rap about living in the purge and sliding through Terror Town with Lakeside members, showing no mercy and putting people in the sky while dropping fives. Free Lil Less, he added, East Side legend who is currently in a jail. He considered Lil Less to be a role model. The song's central chorus, which emphasizes the idea of kill to survive, struck a chord with KTS gang members became the perfect anthem for the gang. He posted frequently on social media after the release, driving constantly through the enemy's turf while blasting the song at full volume and showing his guns, trying to catch some of his ops. KTS Vaughn was beginning to make a name for himself in a rap game. When he first started, Vaughn wasn't as serious about his music, which is why he didn't really pursue any kind of career earlier on. Like his brother said, he would have pursued a career earlier, but he was too busy on the streets. He was in the streets for a long time from a young age. On June 23, 2015, KTS Vaughn was standing outside an apartment on Ellis Avenue's 7500 block, close to Sircon City's territory, off drugs by himself. A group of men in an SUV passing by around 2.5 p.m. allegedly saw him slowing down, asked if he's KTS Vaughn. As he turned around they shot him in the chest. After he fell on the ground they emptied a whole clip into him, making sure he's dead. According to the documents he was shot over 25 times. Vaughn was pronounced dead on the scene. He was only 21 years old. Both his suspected killers were dead shortly after. Before returning back to the hood, he would post on Instagram that he had spent some time on the beach, which was some of his final hours that day. Vaughn and Chapa were beefing on social media the day before. Vaughn was respected and feared member who had been active since he was very young. He put a lot of pressure on all the sets he was at war with before he passed away. He was responsible for many murders. More and more people started to fear KTS Vaughn and all the members. When they say kill to survive, they really meant it known for sliding on the ops daily and letting off shots for fun, which made him to be a top priority from every side, and there is a lot of dudes out there who's trying to make a name for themselves so they will kill you just for the stripes. That's also the reason you don't want to be on the streets high and all that, cause you know your reflexes ain't that good. You don't want to make it that easy to be caught like that. But KTS Vaughn was more than just a gangbanger when he passed away. He was also a son, a brother, and most importantly, a loving father who had a daughter with his girlfriend. Before he passed away, he also had a personal beef with 600 Breezy, but this goes back to the time when 600 Breezy was a GD from Evan's mob. He would also had beef with BD sets like THF, 600 and Oblock for them disrespecting his dead cousin Zico. He used to diss LA Capone for the same reason, and that's also why you could see him lurk around Lamron and other BD sets. There is a rumor that while he and his crew were lurking around THF Hood, they spotted one of their members, reportedly THF Billa, where Vaughn was shooting at him. But it's important to remember that this is just a rumor and that it may never happened. 
He used to hang out in Killer Ward since a kid. Before King Von switched to Oblock and before KTS Von was known as KTS. This is where he and King Von became friends. Both of them was solid and had a lot in common. Close friends both inside and outside the prison. Gee, KTS Von and Davon used to hang together. Facts. They was, they was in Killer War together. They both had guns, standing side by side. Because niggas thought GVO was going to slide through for the repass and shit. And they was both outside standing together. On GDN. Oh, Ronnie, I bet you y'all ain't know um, Vaughn. My brother Vaughn. Y'all ain't know him and him and Vaughn, so Him and this nigga King Vaughn was like this. Oh, Ronnie D. Arthur's, fo. Nigga, never even believed that or know that, fo. My brother Vaughn, nigga, and King Vaughn, nigga, they was like this, bro. Oh, Ronnie. That's how I even know who the fuck King Vaughn ever was. I never heard about a King Vaughn and shit till like 2014, fo. Nah, this was like 2015. Vaughn told me about him. Vaughn was telling me he was locked up with him. He, that's his shorty, all type of shit on run. Um, bro, how that's your, that's your shorty, you BDK like a motherfucker. He boy folding the folds on that bitch boy tree motherfucker. Shorty like that for real. That's my shorty on run. There is also an old Instagram post where he's saying, damn, free my homie King Vaughn, but I'm still BDK. Now what's crazy, a year after Vaughn's death, his father Big Vinny would also die. About 4.30 p.m., 43-year-old Vincent Davis Sr. was sitting in a vehicle with a 22-year-old woman when Murray approached and opened fire. Prosecutors claimed that Davis was struck five times, and a 22-year-old woman was struck three times. Big Vinny was pronounced dead at the scene in the 6600 block of South Michigan Avenue in the city's Park Manor neighborhood. Devante Murray, also known as KTS Rasta, was arrested two weeks after the shooting and pleaded guilty for murder and attempted murder in the attack. Devante Murray, who was also part of EBC, blamed Big Vinny for the murder of his brother and wanted to retaliate and murder Vincent Davis, AKA Big Vinny. Then, on July 10th, 2021, his brother KTS Dre, who had been released on bond from the Cook County Jail, died after being shot 64 times, as if fate had dealt an even crueler blow. We can all say that the whole bloodline was and still is full of demons, but no matter how real they all was, the streets will always get you. It's just a matter of time. A profound and incomprehensible grief that words can hardly express to the family.